Hi guys, welcome to Real Food Recovery. This is episode eight for us and it is on consistency. Slow and steady wins the race. I am Paige Alexander. And I'm Jamie Morgan Reno. Glad to be here always with you, Paige. Our mission at Real Food Recovery is to help empower people to make educated and life renewing decisions that promote physical and emotional health, longevity, vitality, peace, and wholeness. We here at Real Food Recovery are food plan neutral and processed food free. And that's that's probably my favorite, my favorite line. I know. I love it. Say. It's this so empowering. True. Yeah, it is. So what we talked about today is that we are going to focus in on consistency. And the first question that always comes up when this subject matter arises is why? Why is consistency so important? We kind of put together a few sentences that we think represent the why pretty well. Consistency is the critical driver for success. Being consistent means dedicating yourself to your goals and staying focused on the habits, routines, and activities that help you achieve them. Consistency consists of daily micro habits that come together over time to create long-term commitment. It involves sustained effort, taking action repeatedly until you get to the next level and recalibrate your goals. Mm -hmm. In recovery from processed food addiction, there is no finish line. So consistency is key to walking the journey that has no destination. Oh, I love that. Just love it all. Yeah, so very true. We understand why. So once we understand the why it's so important, then we have to shift to, okay, well, how do I do it? What helps with that? And the Mm -hmm. first thing that we think is habit stacking. Do you agree, Jamie? Uh, I would say habit stacking is, is critical, but what helps with consistency for me, when I, you know, when I coach anyone or any of the group coaching that, that, that we do, you know, you, you've got people that will come to us with this whole idea of like, I've got a mountain I have to climb. I've got this big, hairy, aggressive goal in front of me. I need to lose X pounds. I need to get this to this size from this Mm -hmm. size, whatever, whatever. It's usually around physical, physical changes, but for me, I tell them, okay, you have a mountain ahead of you, in front of you. I need you just to to not worry about the mountain. I need you to just take your eyes and put them right down in front of your feet. Just look right down in front of your feet and take a step Mm -hmm. and then more step. And then one more step, just focus on what's right in front of you and stepping towards your goal. And eventually you're going to look up and you'll have gotten a quarter of the way up the mountain and halfway up the mountain, Mm -hmm. the first summit and you've reached the peak. And by the way, you, there's going to be another peak after that, but you won't know that right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Is, Surprise. Yeah. There's so many ways to, to, to derail ourselves out of consistency when we really just need to focus on being consistent and the rest of it takes care of itself. And yes. So, so I say that, and yes, habit formation and habit stacking are, are components that we can use. I liked what you said. We talked about earlier, micro habits. These do not have to be huge. It's the small, steady things. And I also like that analogy about the mountain, just looking down because I climb a mountain every year for my birthday. But the day before we do uh, a little, it's, oh, a mile. It's called Mm -hmm. the incline there in um, Manitou Springs. It's a mile of old railroad ties. There used to be a cog railway on that. And it's about a 60 degree angle. So it's steep. Yeah. And they three fourths of the way up, there's a false summit. So you think you're almost to the top. I mean, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. Takes me a little over an hour to go that mile. You you just are, there's time that you're practically crawling on your belly. It's so steep and, and a lot of loose rock and things like that. I don't know why I love it. So, but I keep doing it every year, but it's, believe me, when you're at that steep incline, mm-hmm. you ain't looking up. You're just looking on that next, finding your toe footing for that next railroad tie and making exactly. sure you're not on too much loose gravel. And yes, there is going to be false summits when you get to the yes. top and then you go, oh shoot, there's <laughs> more to go. And yeah. then after you go realize there's more to go, you just go, okay, well, I'm just going to keep taking another step here and keep going. So right. Yes. For me, habit stacking, I I've talked about that. I go to the gym every morning and because I'm consistently there every day, the girl at the front desk, you have to check in by now, 
she just she doesn't even barely look up she just says i've got you page and i just keep on moving i don't have to get out my little fob and, and do all that business i noticed a few weeks ago she was training someone new and as i zipped by and you know kind of just gave the uh mm -hmm. hello with my fingers and smile and nod and keep going she said gotcha page and then i could hear i've got great hearing i could hear <laughs> as i walked off her turning to this girl that uh, she was training and said oh, that's Paige. She's a regular. And I'm like, dang right. I'm a regular. I've never been so happy in all my life to be called a regular. So that made me feel good. Mm -hmm. And I earned that title and I wear that badge proud. I should have, you know, a t-shirt made. I'm a regular. <laughs> I'm a regular. But yeah. So habits, when they call you a regular, you know, that you're, you've got a habit formed. And even though it ain't always fun, yeah. get myself in the car and drive there. I do what I do for how I feel after. That's right. And that's how you become a regular. So yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to say about what helps with consistency? Yeah. For me, you know, um, I have to put myself in a situation where future me is going to, is going to see the benefit. Yes. And so I say, I'm, I'm doing this for future me. So there'll be sometimes where I'll, I'll, you know, one of the favorite stories is, you know, a friend of mine said that she cleans out her sink with this special, detergent stuff that makes it really sparkly and good smell uh -huh. and takes a little extra, takes a little extra elbow grease. And she says, I'm doing this for future me. So tomorrow morning, when I, when I wake up, I see yes. my sparkly, clean, beautifully smelling sink. And I think, thank you past me. This was a nice gift. And I always, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a silly example, but it's so true. Um, that's how I look at it as when my alarm goes off and I do my snooze dance every morning. Um, what gets me out of bed is knowing that I have a podcast, I have an audiobook, I have a YouTube to listen to while I slug my way into my home office slash gym. And I boot up my computer and I, you know, I start to do my workout and, you know, I, I do that habit. Right. So I know I have that thing that I look forward to is, is that, is that, that listening experience, right. I learned something. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm on my rebounder, I'm jumping up and down and I hop on my Peloton and I get my class going. And I know when I leave that home gym to go shower that I get and get ready for my day that I've not only learned something, I've done something good for my body and for my brain and for my heart. Uh, and, and also for my lymph nodes and lymph glands, hello, rebounding is great for that. So it was, um, it's just a, it's like a nice habit stacker that I always thank myself for when I'm done. I'm sorry. I didn't hear anything past when you talked about cleaning that sink every night, because now all I can think about is I want to do that too. I want my sink to be sparkly before I go to bed. So my future me can be thrilled when I wake up. That's so true though. Nothing feels so better true. than looking at a sink that's been wiped out and all the spots are gone and all that. So I'll try to refocus my brain. Now I, get that's that. a, <laughs> I gotta find out what she used. I know. Yeah, please. It, we need to know. We need to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are the things that we habit stack for me? Yeah. I am a freak about the minute I stand up in the morning, I pivot and I make my bed. Mm -hmm. There are studies that talk about how important it is to make your bed in the morning. So yep. making my bed, I do habitually. I eat clean food every day. I uh, generally do workouts the majority of the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I say my prayers every day. I work on recovery every day. I try to work on my relationships with my family every day. Mm -hmm. And ironically, some of the other things that I habit stack is for my first meal of the day, I've been eating that for years. I actually have like five or six meals a day because mm -hmm. that settles better on my tummy. I don't mm -hmm. get tired of it. And the next meal may be similar to the first meal. So mm -hmm. I also habit stack a lot of those. I have a pound worth of mixed greens every day. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing I have at stack. Those are all things that make me feel safe and secure. What about you? What are the things that you do? Yeah, I, I have at stack as well as, you know, we talked about that, that alarm clock and, and have it stacking. Uh, and, but when I do get out of bed, finally, uh, after this couple of snooze hits, I immediately make the bed. It's the same thing I learned. And mm -hmm. I just, we just did a video about that, a short about that this week, earlier this week about making your bed is the first thing that I do when I, when I get up and it's, there's a ton of research around how that sets you up for success, you know, in, in little and big ways throughout your day. 
Um, I listen to recovery messaging, some kind of audiobook, podcast, mm-hmm. you know, uh, recovery community <clears throat> that I'm part of. It's it's I have a I have a routine. That routine helps me feel safe. It helps me control what I can control because there are so many uncontrollables throughout the day. Um, and I have to make sure that I can pivot with my routine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I have a, a, an eating routine that, that today recently is working well for me. And we'll see how, as I age, if I have to tweak it, um, and it, it makes me, you know, feel really good and it's much easier to manage time-wise during, during the busy work day for me. Yeah. But my other habit stack that I do that I love doing is, um, I love listening to podcasts or audiobooks while I'm food prepping on the weekends so that I can have flexibility during the week if uh, things come up or my schedule goes awry. I, I I listen to something really valuable or I watch something on TV, you know, sort of that I can mindlessly watch um, that's really valuable to me that I will save for food prep time. And that's mm-hmm. a habit stack where I'll be, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to listen to that or watch that. And I'm also going to be doing some food prep. Smart. So smart. I do that as well. So, you know, we get into, we start thinking about why are habits so important? Why are they so important to you? And when I had this thought come into my head, I was thinking about, I go to the grocery store oftentimes on, on mostly on my own and I have a certain place I park. Mm-hmm. I go in, I get my, I get the small cart, not the big cart. I like the small one. Now I turn right. I start in the produce section. And I have a system of how I work through and check out. Every once in a while, I will end up going with my husband and he um, is the driver. He parks in the wrong aisle. Not (laughs) only that, he gets the wrong size cart and he may turn left when we (laughs) get in. I have to do my Lamaze breathing to get through it. I don't know how he makes it through his day doing all these wrong things that are just (laughs) completely backward from the right way to go to how to... Luckily he, he drives the correct way there for me, but he might, yeah. but parking in the wrong part of the parking lot, getting the wrong car, going the wrong direction. I'm like, what a mess. So many rookie it. mistakes, amateur hour it. over here. It's hard to watch. So it. it makes me realize I'm twitching in the corner while he's doing everything wrong. And I realize <laughs> how attached I am mm-hmm. to these habits. And I think I'm just much more comfortable in my routine it requires less thought and energy for me when I have this e- efficient system down and I get nervous when people are doing it wrong. Cause I know the right way to do everything. <laughs> and I just have to calm. I have to do deep breathing exercises to get through it. But when I'm calm like that, and I have these efficient systems in place, it leaves room for other things in my life. So I don't have yeah. to put so much thought and effort to me. So For me, the why is it's just very calming and comforting. And I'm looking for that in recovery. I, I like a very calm brain. I know a calm brain does not crave. So that's right. That's right. Yes. And hopefully my husband won't listen to this podcast. I'll I'll tell him this one didn't take, we, it didn't, (laughs) it messed up. You're not going to know what happened. Yeah. (laughs) We'll play. Um, yeah, the uh, I learned a important thing about my because I too have a grocery uh, when I'm at the grocery store I have a grocery, um, you know, my my system and and my routine and my husband and I would go together and and it was it wasn't quite uh, I, I I wouldn't have to do Lamaze breathing but I I definitely had to um, I would criticize or I would find myself that my it just wasn't peaceful and so what I learned to do was I learned to do all of my routine beforehand and I make this very detailed list. And the list follows the organization of the store. So it's literally yes. like, there's no way somebody could come out without the stuff on the list. Mm-hmm. And, then I, and then I give the list to my husband and I say, please go to the grocery store for us this week, sweetheart. And he goes and he procures everything and he brings it home to me. And, 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 and order is restored in the kingdom because both <laughs> of us, he gets, he gets, you know, his, his needs met of me telling him exactly what to get. So he doesn't have Mm -hmm. to think I get my need for, for order and chaos met because the grocery store is a really chaotic environment for me. I don't really like to be in, if I don't have to be in it, Mm -hmm. I don't need to control that. And, uh, and we actually get along a lot better on on Friday afternoons. (laughs) So it's win, win, win all around. (laughs) Uh, and they do habits make, but habits make me feel safe. 
they yeah. make me feel cared for. And when my, you know, my inner children, like my inner family, and I've talked a lot about that, but it's so important in my recovery to, to make them know after years of, of chaos and years of uncertainty in my life that they feel safe, they feel secure. They feel like they know that I'm going to provide for them that yeah, life's going to be uncertain and lots of things might come our way, but I'm going to always do my best to provide for them safety and security and whatever they need with God's help. And that is something that, um, I am able to let everything else go. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I love it. So it's so important to us to have these habits. In fact, I'm going to tell one more quick story about my husband. And again, we will pretend like this episode never existed. <laughs> I was having to put up a jacket of his the other day. And I said, you know, do you want it in this closet or you want it in this other area? And he said, honey, wherever you're most comfortable, that's where you can put it. And I'm like, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've trained him well. I like to be comfortable. I like order. I am just so much more calm with order, which gets into the next area that we want to talk about. And there's things that can get in the way of consistency. We don't yeah. want that to happen. So what are the, some of the things uh, that you think get in the way of consistency for you? Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, my thought life, right. I can spin a story in my head <laughs> and I just can go down the rabbit hole of that story mm-hmm. so fast. So my thought life, and that's why, that's why it's one of our branches of recovery. My thoughts can, can be my biggest advocate or my, my biggest, you know, demon. Um, my emotions, if, if they're unchecked and I'm not taking time to listen to what, what the underlying need is below that emotion, I will, uh, get derailed or get, you know, in the way of consistency, Mm -hmm. by the way, for me, mood follows action. And I know we've talked about this before, but if I wait to feel like doing something, Mm -hmm. I'm never going to probably never going to do it, or it's going to be maybe 10% of the time. Mm -hmm. But when I am, when I am very, when I am very action oriented, the mood follows. Mm -hmm. So for me, consistency is action. And as long as I'm taking action, the mood will come. Uh, And I don't need to go out all day, you know, go all out right in in every day in my life. I, I, I find that what gets in the way of consistency is rigidity. And Mm -hmm. if I feel like I have to be perfect or I have to do something, if that rigidity is there, it will override you know, something is better than nothing, just something versus it has to be this way Mm -hmm. that when I, when I live that way, um, you know, just to do something, just put something in the bank today, so to speak. Yeah. That helps me stay consistent. And then sure enough, the effort really takes care of itself. Yeah. I am very similar to you in that I need to be careful about equating consistency with intensity Yes. So for instance, at the gym, I do not have to kill myself every day in order to be consistent. It's not good for me. So consistency is not the same as intensity. Right. That's one thing. And then prioritizing my schedule, not being, if I'm not organized, things are going to fall apart. So organizing being our lack of organization will get in the way of consistency. And when those things happen, I... I have to tap into discipline over motivation Mm -hmm. and discipline always trumps motivation. So I can't stress enough about how being on top of things, being organized affects every area of your life. Your addiction loves chaos. Yes. And so it thrives in that environment. So it's kind of, we were talking earlier about a different topic about how, um, all the work up front kind of keeps us protected. So being organized up front keeps me from um, lacking consistency. Mm -hmm. So yeah, preloading the gun for me. Yes. So since we talk about what gets in the way of it, what are the things that you consistently do in recovery? What's vital for you to stay in recovery and be consistent with? For me, I'd say... Absolutely. Food prep, uh, movement every day. I mean, again, even on days of rest, when I, I'm not formally working out, I still go for a walk. I still get out in nature. Or I still get on to move on my treadmill or I ride my bike because it's, it's just, it's, it's consistent. 
Mm -hmm. um, and my time in recovery, my programs, right? Whether it's formal, formal addiction recovery programs or community programs that I'm part of time with, with God, as I understand God, my inner family, right? Those, those inner, inner children and inner, inner parts that I talk about a lot, mm -hmm. very critical that I spend time with them every day. And then I'm listening to them and hearing them. Um, connection with others is a big deal to me. I'm very social and I thrive, you know, connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And um, I also thrive from service. I love, you know, giving to others, doing for others in a way that, you know, fills, that fills my cup always, but I, I need to make sure that I'm coming to the service service opportunities from a place of wholeness. If I'm coming from mm. a place of lack, it can, it can deplete me. So I need to just be careful about uh, the service that I do. This podcast is an example of service, right? We talked about oh, that. Yeah. You know, we're, we're giving back uh, all the years of experience that we've had. Um, and I need to, when I, so if I know that I do a lot of service in a given day, the next day I might feel like, you know, I'm not really feeling like I need to to um, put myself out there today. I'm just going to take care of me today. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of listen to that balance. I, the, I'm going to do one right turn here and talk about what you said about this is a project of service. Yes. And it's interesting that you said that because it hit me the realization, you know, the saying that we love whom we serve. Mm -hmm. We don't know all of you out there, but we do know all of you. I have a tremendous love for all those people that are listening and struggling. They're here listening to us because they're trying to find hope just like we were too. Right. I, and so that drives my passion to want to do more and share more knowledge and share different strategies. I have a deep, deep love for those that are suffering from this disease. So totally off topic, but I just, I just had to get that out. My chest was bursting. So yeah, no, I what, love it. my, my, um, my things that I'm consistent about are very similar to you. The food prep is mm -hmm. number one in my life because it affects every other area of my life, exercise, um, time in recovery, my spiritual practices and connecting with others, uh, in recovery. Uh, my exercise really is a big part of my consistency so much. So I've mentioned before that I climb um, this mm -hmm. Pikes Peak every year for my birthday. So the the Monday we get back from that trip, I mean, we are starting to consistently train for the following year. Mm -hmm. So we train a year and we go to these bleachers at Wichita State University and hike up and down those <laughs> godforsaken bleachers <laughs> once a week. I mean, it's uh, 150 steps. It is hard. It is hard. Mm -hmm. But we go all winter long. It's mm -hmm. it's hurts. It's bitter. It the wind can cut you, but oh, yeah. we're always so relieved when it's time. We're prepared when the time comes mm -hmm. to show up to climb. So yeah, just consistency in that area. I, that makes me laugh thinking about every night uh, when Chris at Christmas night when we're going to bed. I say to my husband, "What do you want for Christmas?" Because we <laughs> we start planning then for the yep. next year. It'll be here before you know it. So consistency. So yeah. what are the payoffs? Why, why do we, why are we even talking about this? What's the payoffs Yeah, for you? Uh, you know, it, it, we talked on um, the last episode about integrity and um, making sure that credibility and trust building is, goes into the, the relationship with ourselves, right? That, that I learned how to trust myself every time I did what I said I was going to do mm -hmm. for me, um, no matter what, you know, I, the payoff is that I, I meet my own, my own needs consistently. Um, and I, I show up for myself consistently. Um, and that results in a calm, stable, predictable, dependable outcome, you know, in my day and my thinking it's a, it's just a really important component for me. Mm -hmm. I, mine's really similar to just that calm that I'm looking for calm. I'm sir, everything I do. I want to focus towards, will this bring me peace? Will this invite peace into my life? Because I know that's just such, as you said, an important component of a good recovered life. And so it's important to me to do things that keep me calm because when I'm in that state, people know they can depend on me. I'm a reliable resource. I'm predictable. And it feels good to 
have my act together and that I can, I, I know I can get more done with my systems in place. Yeah. So being a reliable person to, for others is a huge motivator too. Okay. So if you're struggling with consistency, we have a few tips that might be helpful to you. I have people that I might have appointments with mm -hmm. or they are supposed to show up someplace and they're just like, oh, I forgot. Well, if you're someone that forgets, set a reminder on your phone. Oh my gosh. Agreed. Make a, make a schedule. I, so I'm not great about scheduling on my phone, but I have a planner that shows me the whole day, actually the whole month. I, I like the planner that I can see my month at a time. So I make my schedule every day. I think about my schedule before I go to bed at night. I check my planner mm -hmm. because I can't keep up because it changes every day. So before I go to bed at night, I think about the next day and any preparations that are, are going to be necessary so yes. that I'm efficient and prepared. So yes. what do you do to uh, stay consistent, stay on top same, of things? Same. And, you know, I, I hear some, so, so many people say, oh, you know, don't, don't over schedule. And, and for me, if it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. And so I need to schedule things. I need to schedule my workouts in the morning. I need to get, and I even take advantage of the Peloton app that I use. You can schedule like the class you choose at a certain time <laughs> oh. and I do that mm -hmm. so that I can make sure, okay, I get up at this time. I'm on the, I'm on the bike at this time. I'm in the app at this time, you know, whatever. And it keeps me on my, on task. I live in, you know, in a working world that is, that is very meetings driven. Mm -hmm. So for me, my day is so scheduled that I have to take out time to do the work in between the meetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise it doesn't get done. Um, right. and same thing with the, with the work we do for real food recovery that gets scheduled. You know, mm -hmm. I schedule time to do, to do video shorts. I schedule time to do uploads. I schedule time to do the maintenance that's required. And when you have a podcast, because um, it doesn't get scheduled. It doesn't get done. Yeah. And so I have, I don't have a great memory growing up. I had, um, I had, you know, uh, watched grandparents and moms and aunts and cousins doing post-it notes everywhere. Right. So, so it seems like the, in, maybe I, maybe I have this belief that we don't have good memory in my family. I don't know, <laughs> but for me, I don't do post-it notes. I do in my phone. I'm constantly, Hey, you know, Hey, fill in the blank. I don't want to say oh. Wake up. Hey, fill in the blank. Remind me tomorrow at 10 a.m. to do da, 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 da. And I'll do that. And I, I probably have a dozen reminders in my phone on a given day. Yeah. Repetitive, recurring ones and yes. new ones that I'll think of. Me that. too. Me too. I have too. a grocery list in my phone I, that I dictate. I have all kinds of stuff because I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Superman. I don't know how to remember all this stuff. So I just put it in my phone and it saves me. Beautiful. I, yeah. I'm going to tap onto one thing you said about uh, you schedule your class ahead of time so you know when to get up and get around. I was having a conversation earlier with someone who's in recovery and um, they had talked that about how they get up in the morning and exercise because they just feel better and get it done. And I we talked a little more about it and we discovered that really the trick is if you know you have to get up at a certain time to get your exercise in, just go to bed that much earlier, whether it's 30 right. minutes or an hour. That's right. That that determines when you go. To, that's a person who's organized and wants to get things done. And it's important to get things done because otherwise, again, if you're disorganized, it's just there's it's easy excuses for things not to yes. happen. So if you want to get exercise in and you're a full time worker go to bed earlier and get up earlier. If it's your priority, even if you have to do 15 minutes before work and 15 minutes after work, mm -hmm. something is better than nothing. That's so right. what are the dangers? Are there dangers of inconsistency? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, yeah, it, it's, so I spent so much of my life not scheduling anything. So much of my life just flying by the seat of my pants and, you know, <laughs> going with whatever whim struck me. Mm -hmm. And now I, I don't do that. Because for me, when I, when I am tempted with, with um, maybe not planning or not, not knowing how my time is going to be used mm -hmm. in a certain part of the week, especially the work week for me, um, it's a downward spiral. It yeah. doesn't mean that I don't have rest days and doesn't mean I don't have days or parts of days where I, I don't schedule anything intentionally, right? I definitely do that. But if there's things I need to get done, I find that I will kind of start to get down on myself if I don't mm. have the um, the ability to follow through on what I say I'm going to do. 
It's mm-hmm. really what it's down to. Yeah. The dangers for me is just, it invites lack of motivation and yes. uh, no priority on, on continuing and things can generally start falling off because it, yes. it loses, it loses its important and you lose your motivation due to lack of progress. So if you're not yeah, progressing, it's just, it just ain't fun, right? No, no. So and apathy is not apathy. My addiction loves apathy mm-hmm. and, and apathy for me leads to boredom and leads to resentment. Mm-hmm. And those are, those are my addictions. Other two favorite, favorite mind states. And that is just, um, it, they know that boredom, resentment, apathy lead me right back to food behaviors and eventually processed food. So oh, beautiful. I just don't, you know, don't now, now don't mistake, right. I need rest. I need downtime mm-hmm. that, that also for me, um, gets scheduled at certain dates and times when I know that I have the opening to do that. And I don't have to worry about something else pulling at me. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I, that, that was very well said and a great note to end on. I'm going to finish with this line that success comes when opportunity meets preparation and that can only happen through consistency. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Unless you have anything else you want to share, we're going to hop into viewer questions. Yeah, let's hop in. Okay. Viewer questions. Okay. It's late at night and I'm inspired to change, but I'm not prepared. I'm inspired to change, but I'm not prepared for tomorrow. I think what they're saying is, what do I do? They want to change their habits, but yeah. they're not prepared for tomorrow. What yeah, do I I'm do? guessing that they listen, they listen to our podcast late at night. And they're uh-huh. inspired. And now, okay, yeah. now I want to do something tomorrow. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, you, you just have to do the best you can with what you've got. Um, mm-hmm. I'm assuming they're talking about like maybe food prep or mm-hmm. starting to exercise or something like that. You have to get real creative real fast. That's one option to just dig in and quickly spend 15 minutes trying to think through what you're going to eat for tomorrow and um, make a plan for tomorrow. Uh, You just grab some, do the best options you have. We know when we get hungry, we make poor choices. And also, so that's one option. Or for me, I might just go to bed and take a chill pill and get up a little bit earlier and try to do whatever preparations I would have to, to make. So what do you think? Yeah. For, for me, I pick, you know, let's say that I, you know, and I've been there before where I, I listened to something or I heard or read something that really inspired me. And I thought, mm-hmm. okay, tomorrow I'm going to get up and do this, 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 you know, what should I do first? Um, and I pick one thing to focus on. If I'm mm-hmm. starting something new, if I'm starting a new habit or a new routine, um, I, I, I pick one thing at a time to focus on. And that mm. really helps me, helps me a lot to um, mm. stay focused on those small steps towards my goal instead of like, yeah, I have this big goal and it involves five things and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to stop after, after the first thing, because I don't know how else to go on. <laughs> yeah. So I just focus on the one thing. If mm-hmm. it's, if it's, I want to, you know, like when I started changing my food, it was, you know, let me at this next, this next meal I am going to, and it would happen to be at a restaurant. I, I said, I'm going to order the cleanest thing that I can find on this menu. The thing that I know is going to align to this goal that I have. And this was, this was 250 pounds ago. And I thought, okay, there's just one, this one meal is all that matters right now. Mm-hmm. Let me just do this one thing. Mm-hmm. And then when I did that one thing, I got momentum to do the next thing and the mm. next thing and the next thing. So let it, let the momentum build. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I, all I had was go to bed earlier. <laughs> that's, that's a lot better answer. Don't, don't <laughs> listen to me guys. Do what she no. said. <laughs> but seriously, if, if I can just at least make a plan before I go to bed, then I can sleep. Otherwise I'm still working on negotiating the plan yeah. before I go to bed. So Yep. Okay. I get it. About that. Um, I have to go to a family birthday party and stay for the entire thing. It usually involves cake and pizza, my biggest binge food. How do I stay out of the junk? Mm. So I have uh, 
I have family all, all over, you know, both sides of my family that, that, you know, food is the center of, of mm-hmm. family get togethers. I don't think that we're, I don't think that we're in the, in the minority there. I think right. there's families that have the same goals around family gatherings. And for me, it, it was a very, you know, tr- very triggering environment. There's tons of food right. and, and cues and memories and, and emotions, relationships, and relationships that come along with all of the family events. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and some of them are very positive and some of them not so much. Mm-hmm. So, um, I used to find that I would have to manage the only thing I could, which is me. I could not manage, you know, uh, the, the, the food as much as I would try, you know, mm-hmm. I would bring my own food, of course. Um, I would bring my own food and I would just, I wouldn't say a word about anything. I would just do my, what I needed to do to prepare the food or to heat it up or to get it out of the cooler or whatever I was doing. I wouldn't ask the host of that family event to do anything extra. I would just take care of what I needed to take care of for me, but Mm -hmm. I would also, um, you know, prepare myself so that I wasn't going into, you know, a war zone without, without the right weapon. Mm-hmm. I would have the food. I would have a podcast or a book or a talk that I'd listen to or music that I loved on the way to and from, mm-hmm. or I'd schedule a call with a friend to or or at before or after, so that I could just do something that I that brought brought me nothing but joy on the way to this event, right? And it wasn't about the people at the event. It was really about the food. Oh, for sure. And I, you know, if I had to stay and I had to be around the, the, the cake and the pizza, um, I would remove myself from the room during those portions. There were, there were family events when the food sits on the table and everyone sits at the table mm-hmm. and talks hours and hours and everyone just eats while they yeah. talk. Uh-huh. I learned very quickly early in my recovery, get up and get out, like go yeah. in another room, find something else to do. Usually where the kids were, by the way, yes. I would find where the little kids are because they don't care about the food. They're out doing their thing. Go outside. I'd go, I'd go hang out with the little kids and then laugh with them and see whatever they were doing. Like it was always what much better use of my time than mm-hmm. it is to sit around a table and just mindlessly pick mm-hmm. at what was there. Yeah. So I had this situation actually come up with uh, my granddaughters that I had to take them to a, a kid's birthday party and stay there with them. And I'm having to help feed them and wipe them up. And so I had to do a lot of processing before I went, um, knowing, okay, this is going to be the situation. You need to prepare yourself. You need to eat well beforehand and also have your next meal ready at home for Mm -hmm. immediately when you get home. And they, during the first part of the party, it, it was very active and they were in the, these bouncy houses and doing all that. And so I took yeah. pictures and sent them to their parents and things like that. And then when the food comes, yes, you're just in the middle of it. And so I'm a math minor. So I started out in engineering. I have a minor in math and I love numbers. And so I'm like, okay, it's the eating portion. We have 45 minutes and I would you know, after 10 minutes go by, I would say, you've got 10 more minutes. And it's almost like I separate myself from what's going on. And I just go to a different place in my mind, other than what is happening. And of course, people keep saying, would you like this? Would you like that? Shoving it? No, I'm fine. Just sip on my water, help keep the kids clean. And as fast as you can get them to where we can go wash your hands and clean up and tell everyone goodbye. We had a great time, but I just kept counting down. 45, 35, 25, 15, 10, and it goes faster than you think. And it's over and you go home so much faster. But I put a lot of thought into envisioning the situation before I ever got there. That was critical for me that I had processed all of that before I ever got there. So it's like we were talking about before is I do a lot of work ahead of time Mm -hmm. before I've ever even in these situations. So I can have a strong plan. My brain knows what the plan is and we can work together to to get through it. And you do try to focus on a little bit of socialization. And Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really my way that I go about it, but just almost removing myself from the situation as best I can is something that I do. Yeah. Anything else on this one? before? No, I mean, for me, I just, it's about being present. I don't, uh, I'm not, I'm a few years ahead in those situations. Mm-hmm. So from, I don't need, I don't feel as, as, um, 
you know, uh, hyper stimulated anymore. Yes. And that, so the good news is it, it will get better. Um, mm-hmm. and it gets better over time. And mm-hmm. for me, uh, I focus on the family. I focus on the conversations. I focus on, you know, seeing, seeing where they live or, you know, yeah. walking outside or exploring the area or mm-hmm. catching up with a, a particular family member and getting really in deep about who they are, you know, what they're doing, what they're up to. Mm. That's, that to me is, is a good use of my time. Um, mm-hmm. And it keeps me completely focused on the people instead of the food. And I find now I'm not at, I don't go to a lot of kids' birthday parties where I don't have people to talk to or, yeah. you know, so, so it's different. If I was in that kind of setting, um, right. yeah, I, I probably would have to have a, a few reminders um, and head, you know, head games. But mm-hmm. I also would just, you know, use those affirmations. We haven't talked about affirmations much, but they're critical. You know, that food makes me sick. That food, that food makes me feel, you know, feel old. That food makes me <laughs> feel, you know, um, like I, I can't move the way I want to move. That food gives me a hangover. You know, any of those affirmations keep me out of those cake and pizzas and candies. Yeah. Beautiful. Good, all good responses and the reality of how you handle these situations. Well covered. Thank you. All right. Do we want to do one more or are we running out of time? What do you think? I think we can do one more because it sort of relates to the birthday party question. It's about, you know, okay. being in a food environment you can't control. My vacation is coming up and I'm terrified of giving into food temptation everywhere, mm-hmm. especially because my family and I plan our vacations around food. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that anymore. So I don't even want to go. How can you help? Yeah. What do you think Paige? So I recently just got back off of a big family trip. There was 15 of us. It was a big, big celebration in our life. And of course, I think I'm the only one there that brings food with me. Actually, I'm going to take that back. My, my daughters, they ordered, um, from the grocery store, they had a grocery store delivery to the hotel in Disney. I didn't, I did So being on top of modern technology helps. Yes. So grocery store delivery to your hotel, or if you're in a VRBO, whatever, mm-hmm. making sure the hotel has a refrigerator mm-hmm. that is key. Um, and it's just sticking to easy meals in, in the room or taking them with you. If whatever you're out doing in a backpack, if you can find uh, shelf stable things to take with you. Um, but planning ahead of time, I had as much food in my suitcase as I did toiletries and clothing because it's that important to me. So that's how I take care of myself is I usually allow one meal out a mm-hmm. day. I, I cannot handle, my stomach cannot handle more than that. That, that even when you go out once a day, that food ends up being so much more rich than your system yeah. is used to. So for me, it's planning ahead. And I have, I have a blog, Food Fitness by Page, and I have a segment up about how to travel with yeah. food and the things that I take with me. Mm-hmm. Oat, unsweetened oatmeal packets, apples, nuts. Um, if you have to do beef jerky for a protein or, and I'm not a big proponent of that. I'm just saying it's right. better and than, page. yeah. Right. Uh, packets of tuna, baby carrots, um, I, I pre-bake some unsweetened uh, products that would travel for the day, blueberries, bananas, uh, mm-hmm. all those things travel pretty well, ground flaxseed mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I, it was enough. Every morning I had like a packet of unsweetened oatmeal, which you, they have the water line on the side of those packets. Yeah, so I was able do. to pour that in, mash up a banana, add a couple tablespoons of ground flaxseed and some blueberries. I was done that I, yeah. that I had that I, so I took an apple and an ounce of uh, nuts with me for during the date, maybe a cheese stick or something like that. And then, like I said, my uh, pre-baked uh, sugar-free uh, snack that I could munch on if I wanted that. And then for lunch, those packets of tuna and um, the baby yeah. carrots. And it, that could get me through a good portion of the day until we had a major meal where you're having your fresh uh, produce and protein. So Mm -hmm. for me, that's how I handled it. And I also made sure that I brought enough. So I knew I had enough to come home uh, for every single day, including travel day home. home. So I'm only having one meal in the airport 
And just, this is again, a right turn, but I also prepped food for when I walked back in the house, food yeah. was ready to go for the next couple of days till I got my feet back underneath me back at yeah. home. Exactly. Exactly. What about you? Yep. Uh, all the, all of that is, is the way I roll as well. Uh, I've gotten really good at traveling. My husband and I do a lot of traveling and we enjoy that lifestyle. Um, and we go exploring, um, a lot, you know, we, day trips, weekend trips, things like that. We, we plan mm -hmm. on RVing soon. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, um, we've, the RV will be easy, right. Cause everything will be right there. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the meantime, I've gotten really creative at how to pack food, uh, and bring it with us. I, if we're going somewhere that we have, you know, a destination, like a hotel room with power, we, I, I'll bring my, my instant pot, my pressure cooker. Oh. And I, and I'll, I have a, a smaller one that I have a travel bag for it. And I just pack oh. that puppy and it goes right into the, um, right into the hotel room with us. And that's, that's where I do all my grains or I'll do all my, my steamed veggies for the breakfast. And, um, it's just great. Cause you can get a, I can get a salad anywhere. Right. But right. I can't always get, you know, right. the uh, steamed vegetables that aren't slathered in some kind of, right. Or, you know, they are rich. exactly. And if so, you're traveling by car, it's a, a game changer. It's real easy. Oh, the, it's, it, it poses some oh, problems when you're flying. That's, that's right. tougher. But when, if you're in your car, that's yeah, it's a game changer. Easy. And I've gotten really good with flying. You can freeze anything and bring it on a plane, They'll even if you're you. doing a check. Yeah. Even if you're doing a check bag, I've frozen hummus. I have frozen ah. you know, other things like smoothies. I have frozen ah. that, that, that they'll get through security and then you just drink it. Or when it thaws, you eat it, um, on that plane or whenever you need to. And I've never gotten stopped. So if, if it's, if it's a liquid, like slosh it around, the, you're the in trouble. You take it through, but <laughs> if it's frozen, you could take anything. Well, I don't want anything, but any food thing through. <laughs> My bag did get uh, picked on yes. and oh, stopped in security. It. So I mean, that guy's looking at me and looking at my suitcase and looking yeah. at me and looking at my suitcase. Yeah. And finally, he just said, "Just go on." Yeah. <laughs> he was yep. sick of me. <laughs> yep, that's exactly the reactions I get, and I think it's hilarious. I don't know if it was you that I heard one time uh, say asking for a second refrigerator in the hotel room. Was that yes. you that said oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And usually they will comply if they're yeah. able to do that. They will give yes. you a second refrigerator. If they give you the little tiny fridge and yeah. I knew I was staying there for a week. So I needed a second yeah. fridge, fridge and they did. Uh, they comply. You can ask for microwaves. You can ask for fridges. I have in the car trips, we have like a little heater uh, mm -hmm. that heats up our, our meals. I've heard us. that. I've heard Great. of that. I mean, like I said, we are here to problem solve people. Keep yeah. listening. These are yeah. ideas. You don't have to recreate the wheel. We've already done yeah. it with over a yeah. hundred years in recovery. That's Listen right. to us, stay with us. You're going to enjoy everything that we have to say. We're here to help. And we there is freedom. Help. There is freedom in that. And there's also freedom in walking into an airport or walking into a rest stop or one of those travel centers on the road and just using the bathroom. There is total freedom going in, using the bathroom and leaving. That's yep. it. There's no stopping. Yep. There's no what kind of snack do I want situation or, oh, they only have these here at this one rest stop in this state. Nope. Like I just keep on trucking literally. Yep, You've already made that decision. You don't have to remake it. It's That's very right. freeing. It is. Okay, friend. I appreciate it. Appreciate I appreciate all you, you do. Yeah. I appreciate you. Come Until back, um, next time. Yeah. So next time we will on episode nine for the next few episodes, we're going to be diving deep into our branches of recovery. So very excited next, next time, our next episode, we will start to talk about the education branch of recovery. So yeah, come back for that. Be can't, wait to, can't wait to see you all. Yep. Bye guys. See you later. Thanks for listening to Real Food Recovery. See you soon.